Some people don't even try to close. Some people don't know how to close, but most of us out there fail to close. Like never before, salespeople, sales teams, sales organization are missing their targets. They're missing their goals. They're not hitting their numbers. Failure is the new normal. Let's talk about right now 18 reasons why people fail to close. Reason number one, incorrectly handling objections. We just covered this on the previous course on handling complaints and objections. Most of us fail to close because we incorrectly handle an objection or worse, we end up trying to overcome an objection that was really just a complaint. Number two, this one breaks my heart and you will be amazed at how often this occurs. We don't even attempt to close. We just hope for the best and we don't even go for the close. We never even make an attempt. Number three, no process for closing. We just wing it. We don't have a step-by-step -step process. Number four, some of us have a process, but guess what? We don't follow it. Number five, we fail to train. If you don't practice, if you don't drill, if you don't rehearse for those most difficult closing situations, you're never going to get better. Imagine being an NFL football team and everybody like, oh, hey, keep your day job, dude. Just show up on Sunday like 10 minutes before game time, right? Uh, we'll give you a helmet. You have to practice. You have to train. You've got to make an effort. Number six, not knowing the difference between professional pressure and being pushy. There's a lot of complete garbage. Well, I'm going to teach you how to soft sell. Well, I'm a soft seller. I don't want to be pushy. Of course you don't want to be pushy, but you, there's a difference between being pushy and applying professional pressure. Sometimes that professional pressure is the best service that you can ever provide. Making a decision is scary. People don't want to face decisions. It's your job as a professional to help them work through that process. If your idea of closing is, I'm just going to be soft and light and let the chips fall where they fall. Can you imagine if a doctor did that? I don't want to be pushy and tell my patient to take this medication. It's up to them. Sure, they'll die if they don't take the pill, but I just don't want to be pushy. Number seven, not being sold on your product. Listen, to the degree that you are sold on your product, your solution, your service, yourself, to that degree is the degree that you will be able to sell somebody else. No more, not any higher. If you're not personally sold on your product, on your business, on your company, and on yourself, you can't expect yourself to sell others. Number eight, not being sold on the impact of your product or service, not being sold on the impact that you're going to have on your customer's life. I want you to think about this. Think about the child, the little child, the two or three year old that doesn't like the taste of the life saving medication they're about to get the life saving medication that they need to take. Think about if that person was not sold on the impact or the benefit. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm just, they, they made a face, right? I, I don't think they're going to want to take this medicine. You have to be sold on the impact. This is going to help my customers improve their life. This is going to help my customers achieve their goals. This is going to help my customers get from their current situation, their state of pain, to a better situation and a better life. When you're sold on that ideal that you're improving somebody's life and they make one of those faces because they don't like the taste of your medicine, you're going to keep applying the right type of professional pressure because you know you are sold on the impact of your results. Number nine, not being sold on your price. If you're not convinced that you're asking a fair price, how are you supposed to convince others? Number 10, not being sold on yourself. Oh, and don't we all struggle with this a little bit. Now, we've got other courses here in your CMSC training. I'm going to help you with this. We're going to work on this. Please jump on the weekly coaching calls. I'm always going to be making an effort to get you feeling great about yourself. The fact that you're taking this training right now, the fact that you and I are working on this right now on this video tells me we've got the right person in the right place at the right time. Let's work together on getting you sold on you. 
Number 11, not being sold on your company. Listen, I get it. It's stressful. Work is frustrating. There is no perfect company out there, but I want you to get sold on your company. The same way a star athlete gets sold on their team. When the Chicago Bulls recruited Michael Jordan, their team was pretty darn close to the bottom. They were downright awful. And Michael Jordan came in and said, hey, I'm sold. Chicago Bulls, I am going to get a championship with this team. I want you to become Michael Jordan. Get sold on your company. Whether you're at the top right now or you're at the bottom, guess what? Your company's got a secret weapon. They've got you. Number 12, underestimating the time and effort it takes to close a deal. Far too often, we give up. We quit. We stop right before the result was there. We underestimate how much time and effort it's going to take to truly get a close. Number 13, not being willing or able to deal with emotional discomfort. Listen, hey, if your job was easy, anybody could do it. If your job was simple, they wouldn't need to pay you. You are working on helping people improve their business. You're working on helping people improve their personal life. You're working on helping people get what they want. In that process, it's not going to go smooth all of the time. There's going to be objections. There's going to be complaints. There's going to be emotional discomfort. You need to learn how to handle that, how to stay cool, calm, and collective, keep things light, keep them positive, and keep them moving forward. No matter how agitated or heated your buyer, prospect, or client gets. Number 14, not being able to stay calm and logical when your buyer or customer gets emotional. I need to teach you a system here. We're going to work on this. We're going to practice this, but I need you to stay calm and logical. And I need you to have the right mindset that, hey, this is okay. We're going to keep pressing forward. Number 15, and let me know in the coaching calls if you've been guilty of this in the past not understanding the power of momentum. The power of momentum. So many amateurs out there, so many salespeople, as soon as they get a win, as soon as they close a deal, woohoo! they back off and they take a break. They run a celebratory lap around the office. And after that lap, they head out the door to take the rest of the day off. Listen, winning begets more winning. Momentum is huge. Don't believe me. Listen to any sports broadcast. Hey, we're going into halftime. Man, Tampa Bay really has momentum going into halftime here. Once you understand the power of momentum, then you can start to realize how you can start stringing win after win after win after win together. Not taking a break while all that winning is coming in. Number 16, and I'm about to get real with you, lack of personal financial accountability beyond minimum expectations. All right, I just said a mouthful. Let's break that out. Lack of personal financial accountability, okay? There is so many amateurs out there that are like, hey, I just, man, I, here's my quota. Need to get, need to, need to get within about 70, 80% of my quota to keep my job. That is literally zero financial accountability beyond minimum expectations. If your goal in life is to achieve the minimum that is expected from you, you're probably not in the right training right here. When people have set very clear goals and they continue, and we're going to work on this in goal setting, they continue to confirm, affirm, and reaffirm those goals. And those goals are much higher than a minimum expectation. Well, guess what? Those people are three to four times more likely to achieve those goals. And I want to be clear here. They're three, let's say I set a goal of I'm going to make 10 times more than you. The fact that I set a goal and I continue to reaffirm that goal, I stay committed to that goal, I revisit that goal every single day, I'm three to four times more likely to hit that goal, 10 times more than you're making if you're just going, hey, I just want to do the 
minimum. I need you to really think about this. This is going to be a defining moment in your life. I need you to stop thinking about what the minimum is and start thinking in terms of abundance. Start thinking in terms of what does a real life look like for me? What does having choices look like for me? What could I do if I made 10 times more money? What could I do if I made 20 times what I'm making right now? And start setting financial goals and hold yourself accountable. Number 17, not taking 100% accountability for the close. It's not your prospect's job to close. It's not your company's job to close. It's not marketing's job to close. You didn't fail to close because of the blizzard and you couldn't get there. You need to be 100% accountable. I own this. It's on me right? I'm Michael Jordan. I'm Tom Brady. I'm Mike Tyson, whoever it is. All of the greats out there have one thing in common. They make themselves 100% accountable for the victory. You're going to start doing that and you're going to start seeing results. The second you make excuses, even when you think those excuses are justified, it's not my fault they canceled the flight right? It's not my fault that ops changed the price of our product or discontinued the mobile app, whatever it is. You are now 100% accountable for closing the deal. Not your company, not the weather, not your client, whoever. You are the only person accountable for the close from here on out. And finally, number 18. And oh, this one's a bit of a tough subject, right? You may you may want to look around and turn down the volume if you're watching this at work. Listening to other sales people around you. Yeah, them. Listening to other sales people. No offense. No offense, y'all. But one of the biggest reasons why we don't close is we listen to other sales people. Even those sales people on your team. Even those sales people in your office. By nature. They're going to, for the most part, want you to set lower expectations. They're still your competition. You don't need to be listening to their excuses of why nobody's closing. Man, our company stinks. Man, there's no way we're going to close these deals. You're going to do 600% of plan? That'll be the day. Don't listen to those people. You need to keep your mental strong. Keep moving forward. There is one person in charge of your life. There is one person in charge of your goals. There is one person and one person only on this planet that is going to be the reason why you have a terrible life, a good life, a great life, or a superstar life of abundance. And that one person's not sitting over there they're not sitting over there. They didn't just walk in. Hey, Steve, what's up, dude? It's not Steve. It's you. So don't listen to those people. You're in charge of your life. The world of sales has completely changed. Today's customer has access to more information. Today's customer has more choices. The business world needs you. Studies have shown that 84% of salespeople fail to achieve their goals. The old sales training, well, it just doesn't work today. I'd like to teach you how to take the stress out of selling in a way that's meaningful to you and your customers and get you seven times more business. I'll show you how the perfect sales process works. I'm gonna walk you through everything from prospecting to closing the deal. I'm gonna show you how to determine your prospects' wants and their needs so you can build value in your solutions. You will learn how to handle any objection or complaint. I'm gonna show you how to connect with your customer so it's easy for them to buy from you. I've taught the best companies in the world and thousands of people just like you how to hit their targets. Selling is complicated. I'll simplify it for you. There's more competition than ever before. I'm gonna show you how to be number one all of a sudden, your career is going to make perfect sense, even if you've never worked in sales or the corporate world before. And for the advanced sales professionals, I'm going to show you how to take things to the next level. Easton University is a new, simple, step-by-step -step process that's effective in any industry, large or small. 
you are about to become a certified master sales consultant. I'm Matt Easton, and this is Easton University.